All right, so let us look at Le Chatelier's principle in action. Um, here we have an equilibrium. We have some solid calcium reacting with chlorine gas to produce solid calcium chloride and releasing some heat. All right, so the first question is, hey, this reaction is releasing heat. Is this an exothermic or endothermic reaction? It's this question right here. Well, since heat is leaving the reaction, it's exiting the reaction. This is an exothermic reaction. I just thought we'd get that out of the way. Now, what we can do to a reaction at equilibrium is we can stress it, change it in two different ways. We can either add something to the reaction or we can remove it. So if we're going to add something to the reaction, it's going to shift away from the addition. If we remove something from the reaction, it's going to shift towards the removal. And what we're looking for is whether or not these changes will cause the reaction to shift to the right, which is towards the products, or shift to the left, which it's, is towards the reactants. So let's take a look at some of these. So first off, adding chlorine. Chlorine is a reactant. So when I add a reactant, it's going to make more products. If you put more sugar and flour and butter and stuff in, you can make more cookies. So when you add more ingredients, you can make more products. So adding chlorine is going to cause this reaction to shift to the right. Think of it as poking. If you poke, 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 poke the chlorine, it's going to move away from that poking. It's going to go to the other side of the reaction. Removing calcium chloride. Calcium chloride is the product. This is a trick that chemists use all the time. When you're running a reaction, when you remove the products, then it doesn't have a chance to break apart and go back to being reactants. It's like a chicken. When a chicken lays an egg, it wants to hatch it. If you take the egg away, you cause the chicken to lay another egg. So if you're an egg farmer, that's what you do. You remove the product so that you get more to form. So when I remove the calcium chloride, I pull the reaction to the right because taking this calcium chloride away causes the reaction to replace it. Pressure. We did a little study on pressure. Pressure, remember, when gas particles collide, they create pressure. So if we're looking at pressure changes with a reaction, we need to be looking at the gaseous parts of the reaction. So calcium is a solid, not interested in that. Chlorine is a gas, so that's important. Calcium chloride is a solid, not interested in that. So looking at this reaction, there's only gas stuff on the reactant side, on the left-hand side. So pressure is only going to affect that side. So what I do is I put a P for pressure on this side of the reaction. So now when I say increase the pressure, pressure is a reactant. So when I increase a reactant, I cause it to shift to the right towards the products. Poke, poke, poke the pressure. It's going to make it go away to the other side. Decreasing the pressure has the opposite effect. It's going to shift to the left because if I take the pressure away, the reaction is going to shift back to the left-hand side to replace it. Adding calcium, poke, poke, poke the calcium. It's a reactant, it's an ingredient. It's going to cause it to shift to the right. Removing chlorine, chlorine's a reactant. So if I remove the reactant, I can't make any more products. It's going to come back to the left to reform the missing reactants. Heat, adding heat, just treat it like it's in the reaction. It's so over here, poke, poke, poke the heat you're going to cause the reaction to move away to the left. Remove the heat, you're going to cause the reaction to replace it by making more of it. So we have, what are the ideal reaction conditions? Ideally, we want this reaction to make products. So we want all the conditions that will make this reaction shift towards the right. So we are going to add our ingredients add the reactants. I need to add calcium and chlorine. We need to get the products out of the way. We need to remove the calcium chloride. 
all three of those things told me that it would shift to the right. That's true for any reaction. Adding more reactants and removing the products will cause the reaction to shift to the right towards the products. Our other two factors, pressure and temperature. Well, shifting right happens through an increase in pressure, so I want to run this reaction under high pressure conditions. And removing heat also causes it to shift to the right, so I want to run this reaction under lower temperature conditions. All right, so that's how this Le Chatelier works. Let's look at one more together here. Here we have this equilibrium. Carbon and steam, when heated up together, will make carbon dioxide gas and hydrogen gas. Here we see that heat is a reactant. Heat is going into the reaction, so this is an endothermic reaction. Adding steam, right here. Steam is water gas, so add, poke, 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 you're going to make it shift to the right. Remove hydrogen. Hydrogen is a product. When I remove the product, I get the reaction to shift that way, to replace it. Pressure check. Carbon is a solid, not involved. Steam is a gas. Carbon monoxide and hydrogen are gases. So both sides have gases, but which one has more? Which is going to feel the effect of a pressure change the most? Over here, I have one mole of gas. 1g. Over here I have 1 plus 1, 2 moles of gas. 2g's. So there's going to be more of an effect with the pressure on the product side. So I'm going to put my p over here. So now when I increase the pressure, when I poke, 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 add pressure, it's going to send it back to the left. Whereas decreasing the pressure, taking the pressure away, will cause the reaction to shift to the right to replace it. Adding carbon, poke, 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 send it to the right. It's an ingredient, that makes sense. Remove carbon monoxide, that's a product. Taking away, shift to the right to make more. Heat, this time since it's endothermic, when I add heat, poke, 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 send it to the right. Removing heat would cause the reaction to come back to the left. So again, ideally, for this reaction, I want to add my reactants. This time it's carbon and steam. Those both say going right. And I need to remove my products. And so carbon monoxide and the hydrogen. And then check your temperature and pressure. This time, to go right, I want a lower pressure situation and I want to add heat so I want higher temperature. Pause the video and try the third one here and I'll show you the answer. So make sure you pause it and give it your best try. So this is what you should have gotten. Now on a quiz or a test, I would probably just ask you a question like, what are the ideal conditions for this reaction to shift to the right to make more products? And so I'm just looking for the bottom part. The middle part here t gets you to answer that. I could ask you on a multiple choice, like looking at this reaction, if I remove carbon dioxide, which way is it going to shift? And you could answer to the left. But for the most part, I would just ask the final question, what are the ideal conditions? And so, again, we always add our reactants, sulfur trioxide and carbon dioxide here. Remove your products, carbon disulfide and oxygen. And then, since there's 2 plus 1, 3 moles of gas here, versus 1 plus 4, 5 moles of gas, pressure has more effect on the product side. So that's why a decreased pressure is ideal. And then temperature. It's exothermic, so I want to remove the heat in order to send it right. 
I hope that helps, and I hope you enjoy Le Chatelier, including the lab experience we will do here soon. Thanks.